Hey you guys, it's Moonlander, and uh, I wanted to make a video on uh, my favorite horror novels, and uh, it's going to be my top five. And the first one on this list is going to be Brian Keene's The Rising, and this is a zombie book, and you know, I used to be really into the zombie genre, but there's so much crap that it's really hard to say I like it anymore, because I've read way more than I that I dislike than I like so uh, I don't really say that so much anymore but there is one that I read that I thought was amazing and that's uh, The Rising um, I read this book in one sitting so I mean it's an easy and quick read the only problem is is uh, the guy, uh, a buddy of mine suggested it to me and uh, I wish he would have told me to go ahead and get the second book, The City of the Dead, because I was really mad at myself because it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So if you do decide to get this book or try it out, make sure you get the sequel. Uh, the only thing about this book is... Uh, it, it may not be like the best written material, but... I mean, it's really entertaining, and it's unique because the zombies aren't just undead. They're, like, possessed by demonic forces, and it, uh, the main character of this book is, you know, barricaded in his house, and uh, he's just about to kill himself, and some, just as he's about to kill himself, uh, his cell phone rings, and it's his son who's in... Uh, New Jersey with his ex-wife and he's in West Virginia and so his son's trapped in the attic of his ex-wife's house and obviously his ex-wife must have turned or something because she's not with him so with his newfound purpose for going on he makes his way all the way up well in the first book you know he only gets so far but Anyway, uh, yeah, basically there is no hope at all in this book. This affects animals. Um, like there uh, was a really nasty part like where a swarm of crows like attack people. Like it, it is like gnarly. And there's even a part where they end, uh, some of the characters end up in a zoo and uh, that's really cool too like I believe there was a undead like lion and uh, anyway I, I liked it I thought it was kind of neat okay and then also besides just the zombies and animals to worry about there are remaining National Guard like unit and man they are like worse than the zombies they're like basically using their power make, like sex slaves out of women and stuff I mean it's just really nasty and I mean I know it's probably exaggerated but like you just kinda get the feeling like if the shit ever did hit the fan like anybody with any sort of power would use it for wrong I, I just get that feeling uh, but anyway, uh, I really enjoyed this one. Um, if you're into like finer books or like, you know, literature and stuff, like you might not think much of the writing, but if you can look past this, this is a really entertaining horror novel. And uh, yeah, it's that's why it's on my list. Okay, the next book I wanted to put on here is Richard Lehman's The Beast House. And this is actually uh, the second book in a trilogy, which I didn't know when I first read this. Because uh, I heard about this author and I really wanted to give him a try. So I ordered like, I think like 10 used paperbacks all by him for like 8 bucks on eBay. And uh, this was the first book I read, and uh, I really enjoyed it. This beast house is uh, a museum or a tourist trap. And a woman that clean was cleaning there finds this diary of this woman that was like having sexual relations with this beast. So she contacts a writer, and she's like hoping to cash in 
on him writing a book about this house. And uh, there's some other characters that get involved in... I mean, this is violent, and uh, there's a lot of sexual content in it. Like, uh, after I read a couple other books by this Richard Layman, I really feel like this guy's kind of a pervert. But, I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun read. Um, I've seen some reviews, and people don't really like it, but... Um, I, I do. It reminds me of like a 80s B horror movie or maybe a 90s. And I mean, I wish they'd make a movie of it. I, I mean, I don't know if they've made any of his books a movie, but they seem like perfect movies to me. I know I'd watch them. But yeah, so Richard Layman's The Beast House. Okay, and the next book on this list is going to be James Herbert, The Dark. And this is the first book I read by this guy, and after finishing it, I definitely wanted to read more. So I have a couple more by him, and I've read one more, and it was similar. Uh, you know, it's paranormal. And this one is has really dark evil in it. And the main character doesn't believe in, uh, you know, the paranormal. Uh, it, it has, and he has good reason. And uh, it led to his wife becoming insane when they lose their child. And uh, they go to see uh, psychic mediums. And what, his wife buys it. And he doesn't. And when he catches them in their trickery... Uh, it drives his wife insane, and she ends up in a mental institute, and he spends the rest of his life trying to disprove hauntings. Um, it's been a while since I read it, but I remember there's, like, bad guys, and, uh, the evil in it is, like, really dark, and it, you know, it's called The Dark, and it is dark. Uh, the only thing I really didn't like about this book was I thought the ending was kind of lame, but it's definitely worth reading. It's one of my favorite horror books. Okay, and the next book I wanted to put on this list is Peter Strub's Ghost Story. And this is a pretty lengthy book. Um... It's, uh, yeah, it's long, but it's really good. And it's about these group of older men that meet up, you know, occasionally to reminisce and share ghost stories. And, uh, anyway, uh, they start to, um, connect how they all have this woman. And they start reminiscing and realizing that it was a woman connected to a, a murder earlier in their lives and uh, they get haunted by her and uh, this book is scary and there's a lot of like kind of short stories in it that are really good uh, because of their dreams and whatnot and uh, I do suggest this one it's a little lengthy but it's worth reading okay and then uh my favorite on my top five horror books is going to be Richard Matheson's Hell House. And this is like the best haunted house book I've ever read because it just can, it's scary. And uh, this house that these people investigate are evil. And it's about a rich guy that hires like three different people from three different fields or different perspectives to investigate the house. And, you know, like one is like purely scientific and then uh, another one's like a medium and then uh, can the third one's a psychic, I believe. And, uh, you know, they all, you know, have disagreements about you know, what's actually going on in the house. And the house has a really evil history about a guy that lived there. And, you know, he had, like, orgies and, you know, all this evil stuff happened in the house. It's really entertaining and it's really pretty scary, I thought. Um, there's even a church in the house. And uh, I think, like, there was a... 
a crucifix with Jesus and Jesus had like an erection. <laughs> I mean, it's really dark, but anyway, uh, I can't suggest this one enough. It is, it's one of the best haunted house books I've ever read. Okay, and before we end this video, I had a couple I wanted to add on here that aren't like real strong horror, but they could fit into the horror genre. Okay, and this is a book I just read. I got it for Christmas, I believe, or my uh, birthday. You know, I got it a while ago, and I finally got around to reading it. And this is Cormac McCarthy's Outer Dark. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to include it in my top five, but I wanted to put it on here because I just read it and it's fresh in my mind. Um, this book is really odd. Uh, I will say, like, the whole time I read it, uh, as I, when I've read some of his other books, I really felt like I needed to have a dictionary right by me because um, I can't remember uh, it. I guess that's just his writing style, and this book was actually published in 1968, so I mean it's been around for a little while, but um, I definitely enjoyed this, and it's not like completely a horror book, but um, there are some horror elements in it, and it's one of those books that is open to interpretation, and I've read, like, what other people thought it was about, and it wasn't, like, really what I thought, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm not the smartest guy, so, uh, I'll, I'll take their word for it, but, yeah, I think it was more enjoyable when it was about what I thought it was about. But anyway, this book is really entertaining. Um, it, I think it's like in the early 1900s or eight, uh, late 1800s it takes place. And it's about this brother and sister uh, that live out in the woods, you know, and um, she's pregnant and about to have a baby. And basically you get the idea that it's the brother's baby. And when she finally has this baby, he gets rid of it and he leaves it in the woods. And the book has you, uh, leads you to believe that this traveling salesman picks the baby up. And the book goes on and it's, uh, the brother and sister go their separate ways. And they encounter like far, di they're similar but different experiences while traveling. Like the... The brother has one uh, bad luck situation after another, and the sister, uh, she always runs into people that are willing to help her, and uh, eventually, you know, the, it, the story comes to a conclusion, and it's pretty dark, I think. But anyway, uh, and there's also uh, these three mysterious figures who seem to be going behind the brother and brutally murdering the people he encounters. And uh, the brother is like basically on the run for these murders, even though, uh, you know, at face value, he didn't commit them, these three mysterious figures. Now, um, I, I mean, I don't want to give the whole book away, but... Um, when I finished reading this book, uh, I felt like these three mysterious figures were a representation of, you know, Satan and demons or evil. And basically, they, you know, come, you know, to collect. And uh, maybe about two-thirds of the way through uh, is the part where I... I had a different inter interpretation than some that I read on the internet. But um, if you've read this book or uh, you do read it, um, I, w I would like uh, to talk about it and see what you guys think of it. Um, it's not very long. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> you know, but if you haven't read him before, just be prepared to 
come across words you've never heard of. Because, I mean, there's a, quite a few. I mean, I didn't get the dictionary, but there was times I thought about it. Okay, and the next book I wanted to put on this list, um, it you know, it's not that strong of a horror book, but it has some paranormal stuff in it. And I really thought that parts of it were scary, and it's so well written that I just really enjoyed it. And uh, that's uh, Brett Easton Ellis, Lunar Park. And this book is... Uh, it's semi-autobiographical, like, I think, like, the early parts of his career are actually true, but, I mean, some of it's fiction, so it's a really interesting read, and, uh, I, to, like, write and tell these things about yourself, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, fascinating. If I remember correctly in the book, uh, I can't remember if I read it somewhere, but he basically uh, was inspired for the character of American Psycho by his father. And in this book, he kind of, you know, gets into, like, who his father was and how his father affected him. Um, I haven't read this one in quite some time, so it's not real fresh in my memory, but... I know I really enjoyed it, and I, I, I've, like, bought it for people and uh, lent it out. I mean, it's just, it's a really good read, and uh, there are some scary moments in it, and, uh, I mean, I think it's because of how it's written. It just gets you really involved, and uh, I suggest it, but, I mean, it's not your typical horror, but I went ahead and added it to this list. Alright you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you know, um, if you have any uh, good horror books, suggestions, I'd love to hear them. And if you've read any of these books and liked them or disliked them, I'd like to talk about it as well. So please comment below and like or dislike the video. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.